Hello, welcome to Nuclear Reactor, and today we will be reacting to What If Universe 7 Trained uh, Before the Tournament of Power uh, by Carthus Dojo. I hope y'all enjoyed my reactions, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And this was requested to me by uh, Fight uh, X Love Spirit. Hope y'all enjoying these, though, and here we go. Oh, follow me on the Twitter for updates. The Tournament of Power called upon the strongest warriors across eight universes in the multiverse to come out and fight for the survival of their very own universe. The only issue being that each universe was only given 40 Earth hours to assemble their teams. But what if they had longer? What if there were 72 hours before the mm -hmm. Tournament of Power, leaving more than an extra day for the fighters to prepare? Oh. How would things change? Well, let's discuss it. Everything up to the end of the recruitment arc would remain the same, except for the fact that there would be time an extra chamber. day. A massive change here would be the ability for the Z Fighters to use the Room of Spirit and Time, which mm -hmm. no longer has the two-year limit, as shown by Vegeta and Goku. With the help of Bulma and her extreme wealth, they'd be able to load up the Room of Spirit and Time with supplies, allowing all ten of the Universe 7 Warriors to train inside at once. Beerus, in his panic for the safety of himself, would order Whis to follow them in, meaning we now have 11 people in the Room of Spirit and Time at once, one of which is the greatest master of martial arts in the universe. Now, some of you may be wondering about Frieza, but he actually isn't needed. Goku uses instant transmission to move Boo to Kami's lookout, and then they take Boo in there with him. He'd be mm. asleep for a couple of months, as the anime stated, but that would be fine, since they actually mm -hmm. have over a year they can train in the room. This means that they never have to revive Frieza at all for the Tournament of Power. Mm. Now, ah. you may think we only have our 11 then people going in, and happen. that's not exactly accurate. There's actually one more person they'll be bringing along, Elder Kai. In the original anime version of events, oh. Elder Kai even suggests to Goku that he would unlock Goku's potential for him, but they said there was a time issue. Well, now there isn't one. It takes a little over a day, mm. depending on the amount of dormant potential in a person, to awaken that power. This would mean nine days into training, everyone except for the sleeping Boo would have their potential fully unlocked allowing them oh. all to access the ultimate form. A form that should at the very least rival Super Saiyan 3 in terms of a multiplier, and at most surpasses it. This would mean that in the first nine days, all the humans, androids, and Piccolo should receive a 400 times boost to their raw power. Yes, even the androids would be able to receive this power up since we know that they can get stronger via training, meaning that they have some level of potential within them. At first, Vegeta is reluctant to have his power unlocked, but after seeing Goku get massively stronger because of it, he decides he'll do it as well. <laughs> Boo is the only one to not have his potential unlocked since he's made from magic, and the magic of the ritual does not seem to mix with that magic. Hmm. Now that everyone has their potential unlocked, the power rankings of Team Universe 7 have changed temporarily. Piccolo is now stronger than Gohan, and Android 17 solidifies himself as the oh, strongest Oh, that's right. Because Gohan had already had his awoken to his potential, so he, he couldn't do that again, but Piccolo has been training the whole time and then got the multiplier. Damn. This character on the team currently. Even Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 Goku wouldn't be able to keep up, especially since he cannot stack Super Saiyan Blue at this point on top of the ultimate form. But remember, there's more training to be done. After resting for the night, they wake up to begin their training with the God Maker himself, Whis. I'm not one who usually approves of shortcuts, but I don't think we had a choice here. Now then, you two artificial humans use an energy I'm unfamiliar with, unfortunately. Your training would be best with each other via sparring to further grow your power output, I feel. I also have a feeling when Boo wakes up, he'll be joining you two. Android 17 and 18 look at each other, shrug, and fly off to train amongst themselves. Mm. Goku, Vegeta, you two should continue your sparring training as well. Treat this new state of unlocked potential as if it's your regular state, and learn to access your god powers from there. 
Vegeta scoffs at the idea of having to return to square one, but Goku seems like he was already planning on doing what we said. Hmm. He is the creator of mastered Super Saiyan after all. The two Saiyan rivals fly off and claim their own space to begin their training. Now as for the rest of you, you'll have to learn how to harness the power of the gods from scratch. With your current unlocked powers, I'd say you should be able to handle the god key realm. Goku and Vegeta smirk at each other as they overhear what we says. They remember that realm all too well. Time moves slower in that realm in Whis's staff, but since the staff is in the room of spirit and time right now, that's a stacked time dilation. Whis Whoa. had Bulma provide him extra rations, specifically so that he could keep them in his staff for those who would be training in there. Without another word, Whis puts them in his staff, so for the rest of the year, training for Universe 7 would commence. When they emerged, they were completely different people. Remember, in only six months, Vegeta had surpassed Goku, who had absorbed the power of Super Saiyan God into his base form. So, given a year of Whis's training, the humans and Piccolo were now deep in the realm of the gods as well. Uh -huh. Without even training in the ultimate form, Piccolo was already in the Super Saiyan Blue tier of power. As now they have a whole group of people who can replace Beerus as was Gohan, and Android 17 was already surpassing that tier of power. The humans are harder to be sure of, but after training with Whis for a year and receiving control over God Key with the ultimate form, they are in the range of pre-Room of Spirit and Time, Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. Hmm. Notably, this basically rewrites the whole tournament, but it drastically favors Universe 7 now. People like the Sniper and Frost are jokes now, which means <laughs> Krillin and Ten Shinhan last far longer overall. With only their ultimate forms, the form they're using as base form now, Goku and Vegeta demolish Universe 9 with ease. Dispo doesn't make it out of his fight with Goku and Hit, so he's actually eliminated far earlier. Mm. Kale and Khalifla still fight Goku, but he doesn't even bother to transform for them choosing to test his ultimate form power against them instead. Goku mm. still has an interest in training them as well, but he's also interested in his own power just as much because of this. And so, he eliminates mm. Kale and Khalifla in their first fight. He provides them a lesson through defeat, as Master Roshi had done for him all those years ago. Speaking of Master Roshi, he is excelling in this tournament. With his power increased and his unrivaled technical skill, he's able to defeat any of the people who gave him trouble in the canonical version of events. Without Frost there either, there really was no trouble for Roshi at all. Boo being in the tournament is also a massive blessing for the members of Team Universe 7, since he- I know, I know, I know. Don't tell me. Because he turns them all into chocolate. Or maybe cracker and he cheese! He can heal them at any <laughs> point their stamina gets low. The initial Goku vs. Jiren fight starts very similarly to the original version of that fight. It still goes in Jiren's favor, he just needs to exert more power earlier mm. and this results in Ultra Instinct Omen. However, with extra Whis training and having a Genkidama that's far more powerful than in the canon events of the fight, mm. this causes the initial iteration of Ultra Instinct Omen to be far more akin to its oh. third canon iteration the one all the way in episode oh, 29 of Super. This pushes Jiren to using his full power early, which in turn pushes Goku to the completed version of Ultra Instinct. With a stronger body and more stamina, Goku is able to defeat the biggest threat in the tournament, Jiren, without an issue. There was no prolonged mm. ideological conflict that would cause Jiren to power up even further, and that makes this a fairly easy win for Ultra Instinct Goku. After mm. Goku eliminates Jiren, his body does fall apart again though, and Boo comes over to heal him, but Goku denies it. Goku limps over to the edge of the arena, waves to everybody, and jumps off. Everyone, including the two Zenos, are shocked by this seemingly out of nowhere decision. When Beerus asks him what the hell he's doing, he says that they can handle the rest of the tournament. He's sure of it. Back in the arena, Universe 10 has been defeated by Ten Shinhan, Roshi, and Krillin working together. They move their attention to the remaining Pride Troopers, and they are able to defeat every one of them that remains on Universe 11's team, except for Topo, who is able to eliminate them with minor difficulty. But then he faces another threat, Vegeta. Vegeta is angry that he couldn't fight Jiren. Now there's no one left in the tournament to challenge him, so he has to settle for Topo <laughs> for now. 
He decides to take his time defeating him since he oh, wants God. to have a bit of fun, but then he notices that Kaba is still in. Vegeta eliminates Topo, and with that, Universe 11 is erased. Gohan has taken care of Universe 4 single-handedly, and he moves his sights mm. onto Universe 3. Most of their members are easy for him to eliminate, but as their numbers dwindle, the remaining members merge together and form Aniraza. While Aniraza was far too much for Gohan alone in the canon story, he's basically just a bigger target in this version. <laughs> One swift kick to the stomach, and Aniraza stumbles back and falls off the arena. I don't even remember Universe him. Three is no more. Meanwhile, mm. Piccolo has eliminated Botomo, Mageta, and Dr. Rota all on his own, and now is caught in a fight with the Universe 6 Namekians. He feels mm. their intense resolve, a resolve that came from having absorbed their fellow Namekians, but even still, they lack the raw power required to take down this ultimate god Piccolo. Pirina looks at Salonel and tells him to do it. With a somber look on his face, Salonel puts his hand on Pirina's back, and the two merge. Oh. His power increase is not to be underestimated, and he begins to put up a decent fight against Piccolo, but it just isn't enough to close the gap, and Piccolo is able to- But that, wouldn't that be a combination of most of the Namekians? On, I mean, still, that's still a low power level, but damn, that's hundreds of Namekians combined in the one. ...to defeat Salonel pretty easily. All that remains in Universe 6 are Kaba and the elusive Hit. Vegeta goes over to Kaba and speaks to him. He tells Kaba his plan to revive Universe 6 after he wins the tournament, and Kaba is ecstatic. Without another word, Vegeta punches Kaba in the gut and knocks him off the arena. As he does, Hit comes up behind Vegeta and tries to hit him off guard. But Vegeta knew Hit was coming and avoids the attack. I know how your time skip works now. I'm not the same person you defeated last time. Vegeta and Hit begin their rematch, and as they do, the androids are dismantling Universe 2 with ease. They're enjoying mm. every second of it, playing up mocking personas against Universe 2. But after they've had I their like fun, this they defeat Universe 2 easily. Universe 2 is erased, leaving only Universe 6 and 7 in the arena. Vegeta and Hit have their battle, and it's becoming very clear that Vegeta is just too much for Hit. He gets desperate and attempts to use the time cage on Vegeta. This oh. wasn't a winning tactic, though. There were still other members of Universe 7 that could attack Hit while he had to hold the time cage in place. Piccolo goes to help Vegeta, but Gohan steps in front of him and tells Piccolo that Vegeta won the fight already. Vegeta powers up even further, and by unleashing his full strength, he can shatter Hit's mm. time cage, freeing himself. Oh, when like he Jiren did. Out, Hit is now exhausted. Having used up all of his strength in his trump card, he's easily eliminated by Vegeta, meaning that Universe 6 is erased and the Tournament of Power is won by Universe 7. With so many members left, the Zenos didn't know how to give the wish out. Vegeta says it should go to him since he defeated the last person, but the Grand Priest suggests giving it to the leader of Universe 7's team. They look to Goku, but he tells them that Gohan is their team captain. And without hesitation, Gohan wishes for the universes erased in the tournament to be restored back to the way they were. Damn it. He requested for the universes uh, erased in the tournament, but that wasn't ca in canon. No, in canon, didn't he? They asked for uh, all the uh, universes that had been erased to be returned. So that would include the six that were uh erased previously to the tournament of power because there was originally what 18 universes i think uh, if i'm not, uh, not mistaken i think that was and that would have been cool though to have uh find out what those are like and stuff i'm hoping that's gonna happen in the new uh, uh dragon ball super series that is supposedly coming out but uh you've screwed up Carthu. So, all ends well, and without Frieza, there's no, no Broly. Moreau should be a kickwalk, yep. considering how much stronger everyone is, but who knows for sure until that arc is finished. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for watching. Oh, wait. Have they already at least put the manga out for the next part of Super or something? Uh, Post-Tournament of Power, minus, like, the besides the Broly movie, have they done anything with that? Can y'all let me know because I've been kind of sitting here waiting and I 
really would like to do reactions to that. So if y'all can like clue me in, please, I'd appreciate it. And I hope y'all enjoyed the reaction and follow me on Twitter uh, for updates and like and subscribe if you want. You don't have to, but it's appreciated. And until next time, guys, peace.